Thank you very much for the introduction. And it's a great pleasure to be presenting this today, even though it's from a very long distance away. Uh, we hope that we, uh, we overcome any technical deficiencies on my point. Um, and we have only 20 minutes, so I'm just going to, to go right to the presentation now. And I'm going to make just a, a series of more or less statements uh, with such a short time, we don't have time to really explain much, uh, but perhaps we can have questions afterwards. So I'm going to introduce today a, an evolutionary view of what's called the commons. Uh, ever since be human beings began to internalize the reality of Anthropocene impact on the planet, we've tried to understand the problem that we've created and to find solutions in the material aspects of the world that we all need for survival. And so the commons has been usually viewed as all of the material resources of the world that we need for survival. And we're going to change the topic. And the reason we're going to change the topic now is because all of our growth-based theories and activities of human civilization focused on the material basis of, of the world have failed. There's something fundamentally wrong with the notion that growth is the point of existence and the point of figuring out the problem. Now, the reason we say this is that the, the point of, of life is that growth is simply an inescapable aspect of life. It's a, a spinoff, it's a product, byproduct of life. And that inevitably produces conflict. The point of, of life, the point of evolution is survival and persistence of life that requires means for coping with conflict and resolving those conflicts. And why should we focus on evolution in, in this regard? And that's because evolution is all about survival and persistence, about coping with conflict and resolving conflicts. We ourselves have emerged from an evolutionary legacy and we are embedded in an evolutionary system called the biosphere. But we're going to suggest that the focus of an evolutionary view of the commons is not on adaptation. And the reason for that is that adaptation is a human aspiration. It points to specific optimal solutions and narrowly defined fitness space for existence. The problem is that adaptational solutions always decay if the environment changes. And our efforts to adapt cause environmental change, and that's why we are fighting a losing battle. The nature of the evolutionary commons, then, is the potential to explore and exploit our surroundings. And for bias towards exploration or towards exploitation as appropriate for survival and persistence. The nature of the organism, that is the fundamental nature of, of living organisms, is that they produce material outcomes, that is the organisms themselves and their offspring, that interact with the environment in ways that produce even more potential. And I'll show you a, a little, little uh, diagram of this. If, if we think of the, the, this lower line here where we, that we call realized capacity space, think of that, think of all the area under that have ever been produced in the real world. But organisms are produced and exist in the real world, they also carry with them the potential to produce even more organisms. And so the act of producing organisms also produces enormous amounts of, of new potential. And now I'm going to show you a, just a very quick little couple of diagrams about how biological systems use and renew that potential. And there are, there are a couple of elements of this, things called compensatory changes in cohesion, which basically response to, to density, uh, over density and response to new opportunities that involve breaking old correlations and forming new ones. So, sorry, let's, let's imagine a group of organisms, a population of organisms right here. And this diagram is meant to, to indicate that they are maximally exploiting their surroundings in this localized area. Now, exploitation 
leads to localization in, in, in some kind of fitness space. Could be geography, it could be just functional space. But notice it's maximally exploiting that, but this area around it indicates all of the other places in the world where those organisms could survive, could flourish, if in fact they, they went there. If there is too much exploitation in this area, then what do organisms do to cope with the conflict that results from overexploitation locally is that they move away from that conflict. So now you have a situation in which there's less conflict in this area because some of the members of that group have moved to a new part of this larger fitness space where they're able to survive. This is, this is how organisms, how populations of organisms cope with conflict. When that breaking apart of, of an old system, moving into new areas of, of fitness space, result in the old system retaining itself, but a new system also forming, each of them with their own larger sloppy fitness space, as we call it, this is what conflict resolution in evolution looks like. You now have two separate systems, each with their own sort of preoccupations, and that then reduces the potential for conflict, negative conflict with respect to each of those. This is called ecological fitting in sloppy fitness space. Exploitation bias behavior on the part of, of organisms and populations results in specialization and also in the accumulation of potential. Exploration biased behavior results in generalizing, generalization, and the loss or the use of potential. And it is the oscillation between exploitation biased and exploration biased behavior that allows or, uh, evolutionary systems to cope with new conflict, new opportunities, and, and unpredicted, unpredictable changes in their environments. Now, the way organisms, the way different populations of organisms retain potential maximally is by forming ecosystems. And ecosystems are basically metabolic systems. They are systems for exchanging energy among the various entities within the ecosystem. So the more metabolic closure, that is the more times metabolic interactions between species within an ecosystem occur, the more robust and resilient the ecosystem is and the more potential is retained within the system. The way in which we can imagine human beings retaining potential, that is modifying what's happening today and thinking in terms of the evolutionary commons is to use an example of what's called biomimicry. That is, let's imagine human economies in terms of the kind of natural economy, that is ecosystems that retain the maximum amount of potential. And because metabolic closure or metabolic circularity is what provides that for ecosystems, circular economies within human economic systems is the best example of biomimicry. This is the best way to retain evolutionary potential within uh, uh, human systems. The way we use the evolutionary commons, that is the way we use the potential that is built up within these kinds of, of, of uh, circular economies is, is through recognizing that evolution is survival of the fit, not the fittest. You only have to be good enough to make it. You don't have to be absolutely best at that particular time. And this is important because what is the fittest at one point in time becomes maladaptive, becomes unfit when the environment changes. So what you need is something that is okay for survival and has the potential to survive in changing environments. Now, in terms of human economies, that means that profits, that is growth, profits, something the best, this sort of idea, is ephemeral or, or illusory. And we have to remember that, in fact, it's people and, and 
their evolutionary legacies that are the basis of survival and persistence. So that means that our focus, our economic focus, has to be on the well-being of human beings, not on profits that a subset of human beings can make with the hope that somehow profits for a small number of human beings will improve the lives of other human beings. We have to focus first on well-being, then worry about how well we are. So in order to ensure humanity's future, we have to understand that we must expend potential in order to survive what is coming at us. We, we have basically run out of time. We, we have to respond. We have to change what we're doing. And in order that, to do that, we have to, to recognize what potential we have that will allow us to survive. And then we have to use that, that potential. And we will know when we have produced a workable resolution as a result of using that potential, when we begin to accumulate new potential, which will allow us to survive the next set of, of changing conditions, which will inevitably happen as long as human beings are in existence. So sorry about the technological glitch there with, with PowerPoint, um, but I thank you for your attention and I hope that we can continue uh, developing this particular perspective uh, as, as we go along. Thank you very much.